That is a look at the new season of Big Brother Canada. After the pandemic cut last season short, the show's back for a post-apocalyptic season nine. Oh, it looks so good. And between the challenges, betrayals, and showmances, host Arissa Cox, of course, has been there for it all, and she joins us now. Arissa, good morning. Nice to see you. Good morning. How are you guys doing? You look beautiful. Well, likewise, and we're well, we're well, thank you. Uh, last season, as Kara just mentioned, cut short because of the pandemic. So uh, how's the show dealing with COVID and keeping everybody safe? Well, let's just say it is our top priority. Um, last year, of course, there was a government-mandated provincial sh shutdown, so we had no real choice. Um, this year, I think it is so much more precious to us because we weren't able to finish out the season last year. So... Um, the strictest protocols you can imagine are in place because we have over 300 people that work on the show. Um, luckily for the people in the house, um, one thing I realized um, is, you know, they, they were isolated for a long time and getting a, a million and one COVID test so that they could be ready to go into the house. But like, how weird will that be for this group of people to be able to take off their masks and interact normally because they are going to be kept in this bubble and are in this, you know, this, actual quarantine in the house so i'm just happy we're able to pull it off because um we are we are really grateful to be here at this moment well and so many fans are as well now last year's theme was superheroes and supervillains and i remember you saying last year that was one of your favorite designs now this year the house is similar but it has gone post-apocalyptic so tell us all about it <laughs> Okay, so imagine, you know, it was the end of the world, but life finds a way. Life has found a way to creep back into the house. So some things look familiar from last year, but a lot is overgrown by vines and vegetation, like it is coming back to life, like it's been abandoned this whole time and we're coming back. So every good superhero story has a really good sequel. So that's kind of the way we're looking at this season. Last year, you know, the story wasn't able to play itself out. And now we're hoping this amazing group of people will be able to finish what the house guest last year started. Um, I love the house. I think it looks so cool. And we've got things like, uh, I don't know if you know this, but we have a ball pit in, in the house. We have an entire room that's all balls everywhere. Like, I want that so badly. I can't oh, wait to Oh, come on, like, like McDonald's Playland? Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> It'd be so fun. Honestly, I swear, I want to give a prize to the very first person who understands that they can hide in the balls and, and eavesdrop on their fellow house guests. <laughs> Now, listen, season nine has got the most diverse cast the show has ever seen. So, Arissa, tell us uh, why this was so important to you and for the game. I think, you know, Canada is a country that is so rich with different types of people, different experiences um, from different regions and races and religions and gender expressions and sexualities. I think we forget sometimes that we have the ability to do anything we want. Like, why not have a cast where people watching, especially young people watching, because we have so many young people who watch Big Brother Canada, how amazing would it be if they turned on the TV and saw different versions of themselves in different ways, that they understood that there is such a range of, of humanity here in this, in this country that, they, that we want to celebrate. Um, I think that was really, really important to us. It's always been really important to us. Um, and now we felt we had this opportunity to kind of turn it up and become even more encouraging for other shows and other networks to feel like, oh, we can do that too. It's not, you're not, you're not losing anything. You're gaining something. And the bigger the tent, the more people you're including in. And I think that is, you know, the, the word diversity and inclusion, it gets thrown around a lot, but that really is what it's about. It's about feeling included. It's about feeling like you belong. And I think that's really, really powerful. And it's something we could do at Big Brother Canada. That's awesome. All right, now for the first time, the season is kicking off with the players on two different teams. How is this going yeah. to affect the game? <laughs> I, I can't wait to see. I love it. Um, my other favorite reality uh, show is Survivor, of course, which always starts on multiple tribes, but I've never seen all the tribes be on the same beach, and I feel like that's what Big Brother is bringing to the game because people are working in teams, but, of course, there's going to be a lot of, like, cross-team um, you know, secret alliance action happening as well. 
are you going to go with what your team thinks is the right thing to do or are you going to sabotage them because you're looking at a game five steps ahead? I think it's going to be really interesting. And um, I love that all the people coming in thought they were going to play one way and we threw this twist at them and they're like, throw it out the window. We have to adapt. And I, that's what I think we have about every other winner that we've ever had. They're, they're really good at adapting. Oh my gosh, I can't wait when Arissa's voice comes in like as the voice of God and then everyone's like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. My kids get a real kick out of it. They're like, <laughs> <laughs>